As kids head back to school, they need their backpacks, school supplies, and of course, cool new lunch boxes. But something you may not have put on your list, an eye exam. Dr. Carl Hillier from Alvarado Hospital here to tell us why a vision test is so important. Good to have you here today. Good morning. It's nice to be here. I know that when I was, uh, I think it was seventh grade or so, I started getting these headaches. I was sitting sort of in the back, and I thought maybe there was something wrong with my ability to learn, and it turned out it was a vision problem. That's a common occurrence, and a lot of children, they can't articulate the visual issues that they have because they don't know what it looks like to other people. So that's a common issue. And, and you're saying that 20-20 vision with kids is simply not enough. That's right. There's a, there's a myth in our culture that pervades our culture, and that is that 20-20 is perfect vision. But what we know today is that the visual skills necessary for learning go far beyond the ability to see 20-20. Uh, this is because 80% of what we learn in school is visual. And if there's a visual issue with tracking or binocularity or visual perception or visual thinking or visual imagery, these issues could be far more devastating than being able to see clearly in the distance. Well, let's talk about some of the signs. I mean, your kids may come home and not have the best grades. You know, we can't excuse that for everything, but mm -hmm. what are some of the signs that maybe your child's vision is really, you know, not where it should be? Well, it's typical of a child who is smart in everything but school. So they have issues with being able to take, they take too long to do their homework, for example, or they have poor reading comprehension. They, when they're reading, they skip lines and reread lines, and they don't have, therefore, a continuity of what's in the text. Uh, short attention span sometimes can be misunderstood as ADHD, when in fact it could be a visual issue with the inability to converge the eyes and focus the eyes, and therefore the child no longer wants to sustain that activity, and they'll look out the window, or they'll talk to their neighbor, uh, they're trying to get information, they're trying to be socially competent in school, and so since they can't connect visually, their behavior will be perceived to be a lack of inattention, or lack of attention. Well, and, I, and this is such a common problem, you're saying, and, and so you brought some pretty cool tests for us today to practice. I am going to hold this up, yeah. and uh, tell me what this is right here. Well, that's just a, a sentence. It's a, um, a little fairy tale kind of sentence. And if you read that, this is what most of us see, uh, a nice organized row of words that enable the child to track and uh, read what's there. OK, now this might be what you see if the vision is not where it should be. That's right. This is when a child is trying to read, uh, and if you were trying to read this at home, it'd be quite difficult. And as a matter of fact, a listener listening to you try to read this might come to the conclusion that you have dyslexia, maybe you don't have enough experience with reading, things like that, when it could in fact be a visual tracking or a binocular problem. Okay, right here with this paper. You asked me to do it before the break. Tell us what we're trying to find with this. Well, this gives you an opportunity to see what it's like to not be able to track well and to miss words when you're not even aware of it. What I'd like you to do here is count the number of F's in this sentence. Okay, so I see one, two, three. Oh, I, I think there's supposed to be five, <laughs> but I just see one, two. I just see three right now. Well, there's actually seven. There's seven? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I gotta get my eyes re-examined. Yeah, <laughs> there's seven in here, that's wow. Right. And so when adults can't f see all that they're looking for, just think what it was like for children. They can't even express why they don't see everything on the page. My goodness, you know? so there really are seven Fs oh, in yeah. here. Okay, yeah. I failed very badly on that one. <laughs> okay, and here's another one. This is a picture, and this, you said, can indicate something if they don't see the image very well. Right, this has to do with visual perception, specifically figure ground, visual closure, size perception, form constancy, and these are visual perceptual issues that are often not evaluated when a child is uh, examined in preparation for school. Right. Now the picture actually should go this way, but uh, Dr. Hillier wanted, you know, us to try to fake you out. Right. So when you circle this, of course, the image becomes much more clear. Right. And if you hold those side by side, one above the other, you can see that the perception is now available to you because you can see the cow in either picture because we've closed, we've employed the opportunity for you to see visual closure. Mm. And now you can make sense out of what you see. But a lot of children, they'll look at this picture here and being, they'll be asked to talk about it, to write a story about it, and they have no idea really what they're supposed to do. And that's because of a visual perceptual problem. These, these need to be evaluated in children before they enter school, not just 2020. The Snellen chart, the big chart at the end of the wall, is absolutely inefficient or insufficient mm. to determine whether a child's prepared for school. Good point. And these glasses right here? Well, this gives you, Renee, an opportunity to see what it would be like if you had a visual issue. <laughs> so here's a pamphlet from the Alvarado Hospital. My God. Vision Rehab. <laughs> I see clinic. four of them right now. Yeah, and so 
here, if you were to try to read that and make sense out of it, you wouldn't be able to. It is tough. It, but, there's a butterfly on here, but literally there, it looks like it's jumping off the page when I'm wearing these glasses. Right, but if you went and had your eyes checked and you covered one eye and could read the bottom line on an eye chart, cover the other eye, you can read the bottom of an eye chart, that tells you nothing about your ability to be able to contend with written information in school. Thank you so much You're for welcome. coming on today. Thanks for having Good us. Good to have you.